to Vixens Live. I'm Bianca Chatfield and joining me as always, Clint Stanaway. Hey Bianca, are you well rested? I'm well rested. I mean, we had a bye week as well, which we was good. Uh, we needed it. We, we needed just a little rest. <laughs> now We're we do, talking a lot. We do have our coffees here with us, oh, yes. thanks to McCafe, who are a, bringing you this episode. Are you a high maintenance coffee orderer? It's pretty good. No, I'm a flat white drinker, so I'm fairly stock standard. Okay. I'm, are you like a, a, a half shot? Soy, no, you know, all actually, the rest of it. I'm just a double espresso straight up. Mm. That's it. That's Keep pretty it good. Pretty simple. You just need a little, just a little buzz, a little, just a little hit. That's right. Let's ask our special guest what her coffee order is, shall okay. we? Because joining us from the Vixens Hub is none other than Kalia Stanton, ladies and gentlemen. Woohoo! Evening, <laughs> Kalia. Hi. Hi. How are you going? We're great. What's your coffee order? Um, a bit boring. I go for a skinny cap. Yeah, see? That's okay. No, perfect. Yeah, I think... As no long, fuss. As long as it's not more than four words. <laughs> if it's more than four words, it's high maintenance. So you're okay. You fit in too. <laughs> now, I yeah. often see Kalia around Melbourne when oh, yeah. they're in Melbourne, yeah. just hanging out at all the cool cafes, really? which probably means that I am too, but... <laughs> so can we get a little... Give us a little taste test where, you know, what's your favourite cafe? Yeah, Kalia, what is your favourite cafe in Melbourne? Outside of the McCafe. Uh... Obviously, the first choice would be McCafe. Um, no, I actually like to try all different places, all new places. I, I think I saw you, Bianca, at Norman. Yeah. Uh, or Norman's in South Yarra. So that's a really good spot. I really like to go anywhere, anywhere that's good coffee, anywhere that's new. Um, the girls seem to think I like to try all these really cool hit places and really I'm just trying to explore Melbourne because I'm not from there. So, yeah. <laughs> um, where else can I think of that's off the top of my head? It's a couple of places where I am, which is in Malvern East. So um, there's a couple of little places around there. But yeah, anywhere and everywhere that's kind of close to training or yeah, Albert, Fat Alberts. Actually, that's another good one as well. You'll often see the girls at Fat Alberts in South Melbourne. Now, Kalia, you've obviously moved to Melbourne, um, what, end of last year. What's it been like? Is that what you've loved the most, the cafe culture? Or are there other things that you're loving about Melbourne? Yeah, well, I mean, for me, netball, um, you know, is my priority. And I think for me, coming over to Melbourne, knowing how good the netball is over here, it's been fantastic. And I have really, really enjoyed uh, my time so far with Vixens and just the culture and the way that the girls go about things. And everyone's so lovely and so friendly. Um, I also work in the office as well. So having, um, you know, those people as well. Um, I think the other side is just the connections. I have some friends that are from back in Perth and um, they live over in Melbourne as well. So having a bit of a outer bubble for me outside of netball has been really nice. And um, yeah, the cafe culture and food and everything. I love talking about it, eating it, finding new places. So yeah, it's great for me. We do hear you're a big fo uh, foodie and we're going to hear more about that very, very shortly. That's a nice tease, isn't it? A bit of a master chef in the making <laughs> I hear is Kalia Stanley. Uh, Kalia, give us a, a bit of an impression of, of what life's like right now. You're obviously uh, still in the hub and still, well, things are looking a lot better in Melbourne and Victoria now. So hopefully we'll be welcoming you all back with open arms very shortly. Um, but where are you at the moment and what's the next sort of week look like? Yeah, so we are currently up on the Sunshine Coast. We've been up here over the bye weekend as well and we had a bit of downtime, which was really good to recharge, especially after what's been quite a gruelling and, and busy couple of weeks, particularly um, on the road. So we ha fly out to Perth tomorrow morning and we have um, our game over there. And in the meantime, we're just, you know, prep as usual and then going about our business to help get us over the line and get that win. Now, you talk about bye weekend, and I do a little bit of stalking on TikTok oh, and Instagram. Do you now? Yeah, and I just. Always, always come prepared, you do. I do. Oh, no. And Kalia, <laughs> she decided to do a TikTok of her adventures over bye weekend. So we've got it here. You got your hair done, as we can Very see. Important. Looks great as well. Yeah, beautiful. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of beach time. What else did you get up to during your bye weekend? We, did Simone give you a lot of time off like how many days did you get off without having to go to training or talk to each other if you didn't want to <laughs> yeah so uh we got four days off so we got friday through to monday which was absolutely amazing and for any athletes who are watching this they know that four days feels like about a month um, so even just having one day off was amazing and to be able to explore the rest of uh, queensland and the sunshine coast was really really lovely so 
went on a day trip down to the Gold Coast, which was amazing, and got to explore a couple of food places and then uh, also got to go to a storm game as well. It was quite cold, especially for the Sunshine Coast. I found it quite cold, hence the beanie in my video. Uh, but, yeah, we got to go to a game, which I believe was an epic score. I don't usually go to rugby. I'm more common going mm. to um, – more frequent at the AFL games. So, yeah, it was a fantastic game by Melbourne Storm who ended up winning, so fantastic by them. And, um, yeah, just a bit of chilling out as well. I work – so I worked a little bit on the Friday and the Monday. Um, yeah, it wasn't as exciting as it might have come across on the socials, but I think it was just nice to have some downtime and do things that I really wanted to do. And I think, yeah, just setting myself up for a really good week. There's a beautiful sunrise there. Now, we had a great sunrise 24 hours ago. The only difference was that it was three degrees. Well, I mean, <laughs> Kaylee just spoke about wearing a beanie on the sunny yeah. coast. Imagine if she was I know. Yeah. Yeah. But it's for fashion. It isn't for, like... <laughs> for fashion. It's not, it's not through necessity, is it? <laughs> That's right. But, Kaylee, how... Just to, the break is one thing, but also being able to sort of hit the refresh button, given what, you know, you and the girls have been through already this season, how important was that? Oh, really important. I think it's it's easy to underestimate the um, importance of recharging. I think it's easy to just keep going and going and going and not actually have a rest and break. But it actually is really important for both physically but also mentally as well to recharge. I think uh, we go so hard for so long and, you know, even just having a day off is amazing. But to be able to fully recharge and stop from what we're doing in that training venue and have a bit of a different scenery is really important for our mental health as well as our physical health. Now, you really ruined my segue before, oh, no. Clint. When I was talking about beanies, I was going to talk about something special for all the Vixens members okay. out there. Well, <laughs> okay. pretend that we've just asked you about beanies. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than this for all the Melbourne Vixens members, especially with this exclusive 15% store-wide offer. With your existing 10% discount, this comes out at a whopping 25%. Members, check your inbox for the code and make sure you are logged in to get the full discount, and I'm sure there will be beanies. <laughs> that you can buy. Yeah, there's <laughs> plenty of great merchandise on offer. I might oh. get myself a Vixen's hoodie. Yeah. Another one. I want a Vixen's mask. I mean, we oh, yeah. wear them enough. We might as well have a Vixen's one. Kaylee, I want to talk to you about food because it is something that comes up a lot. So important. We talk to you. We love food too, but you are a good cook as well, aren't you? You really enjoy cooking. I... I dabble in a bit of cooking. Yeah, I <laughs> actually got it's actually I don't know if this is embarrassing that I'm admitting it, but I actually got my blender sent up here. Uh, so we we have one bedroom or two bedroom apartments and I decided because I love cooking so much that I get my blender sent up, which has actually become quite useful. I've made a uh, pesto pasta, so I made the pesto sauce in the blender and I've made smoothies and um, a couple of other things as well. And I made some gnocchi as well, which was really wow. good. So some of the girls have been um, on the receiving end of that, which has been very nice for them. So, yeah, I really enjoy it and it allows me to kind of recharge and feel a little bit more like home. So are you a MasterChef fan? I am. I'm a huge MasterChef fan. Oh, maybe we're going to see Kaylee on MasterChef one day. Well, maybe. A few more questions on food because <laughs> we love it. Um, what's your favourite dish to cook? What, what would you say is your sort of go-to? Oh, that's such a hard one. I think for me, I absolutely love sweets, which doesn't go hand in hand with being an athlete because obviously healthy lifestyle and sugary uh, treats, you know, <laughs> should be in moderation. Yeah. However, I absolutely love Toblerone chocolate mousse. It's kind of a family oh. classic that we have. Um, it's really easy to make. Um, also, I should point out, I did attempt a couple of years ago to try and get onto MasterChef, oh. but the timing didn't work out with the netball seasons. So did you get through casting and get all the way to the end? No, I didn't get that far. I had to put my application in and then I realised when I was submitting the application that you had to be available for filming for a certain period of time, which actually was the netball season and as you're well. Like, oh, <laughs> actually, can you just for like, mm, not gonna all the Vixens fans, they would love to know, I'm sure, what, what does it involve when you apply for a show like MasterChef? What did you have to do? Um, I think for me, I just really got to the interview process. So you just have to fill out an application online. And then I believe after that, if you were successful, you would go through another round of interviews and then eventually you'd get further and further where you actually cook for them. 
I have a I have a thing with pressure in the kitchen, so <laughs> I, I don't cope at all well with it, even when I'm cooking for myself, let alone really? others. So yeah. I don't think I'd go very well. But my segue here is about dinner parties <laughs> and you cooking for other people. Um, I hear that you're about to invite Bianca and myself over for dinner along with some VIP guests. Yes, obviously you guys would be very important guests that I need to make sure <laughs> I can course. impress. Um, but also I, I've thought about this a little bit, which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but essentially I want to create a really nice atmosphere at my, you know, amazing dinner VIP guest party. Mm -hmm. So I want to start with a bit of music. So either Adele or Lady Gaga getting oh, some okay, atmosphere. Yep. <laughs> What's your budget? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no budget, I'm just going with okay. anyone here. Go, there is great. no budget, yeah. Um, look, I've got some other people who may or may not be dead and alive. So it's a bit of a combo deal here. Right. But um, I would also love a little bit of comedy, a bit of humor to the table, a few laughs. So either Graham Norton or Robin Williams. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> I feel this isn't what you're expecting, but you're getting it anyway. And I'm really sorry it. in advance. Um, and then I would probably invite my family um, and some really close friends of mine as well, just to relive those memories and experiences and be able to have a really good time with them as well. Would there be a, a Vixen's teammate or teammates that you'd invite, or are they just. They don't later? appreciate it enough. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. I'm joking. Um, I would definitely invite the whole. <laughs> I would definitely invite the whole team. Okay. But I think the other thing, I'd probably have Foxy there as well. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and what are you going to cook? What's what is actually on the menu for this dinner party, other than the Toblerone mousse, which we need to try? <laughs> yes, I'm more than happy to make it for you guys. I would have. Oh, now you're putting me on the spot. I'd probably have a really nice fresh starter of fish or. Um, maybe even like a bruschetta or something like that. And then for mains, I'd go either like a chicken or a beef. Um, you could go for like a massive curry because it feeds heaps of people or you could even go for something really light and fresh, um, like a big salad and um, have some chicken on the side, some charcoal chicken or something like that on the side. And then for dessert, Toblerone chocolate mousse or even like a custard tart or something. I love a good fruit flan mm. or a cannoli or um, <laughs> even like a – custard filled donut or something like that. Whew. Sign us up. Yep, we're there. We're there. <laughs> um, let's straighten up a little bit, uh, Kayla, if we can. You're doing some great work behind the scenes for Netball Victoria. Just tell us about the role and what you're doing from day to day. Yeah, so basically I go from training to work and for me I work at Netball Vic in inclusion and diversity as one of their coordinators. So basically my role involves programs with people with a disability and also for um, Indigenous programs as well and there's a lot of different variations and um, every day is different and I'm also um, in charge of coordinating Murray Little Shield. Um, which is a fantastic competition. It's a state team um, that's run every year. Obviously, last year, unfortunately, that wasn't happening due to COVID, but the girls are incredibly excited for this year's competition. And I get to see them develop over the course of, you know, a couple of months as they progress through the training. And um, for me, it's really rewarding, this role, and to be able to, you know, have people who might not have explored netball before get involved and maybe it's at a... You know, beginner level or intermediate level and even through, you know, the pathways and we're really trying to push that Indigenous pathway as well to the elite level and I think we're seeing some real growth in that area as well. Oh, it's really important work. Well done um, to you and the team on, on what you're doing. Um, let's take a break, but when we return, we've got lots more with Kalia Stanton, but first the new McCafe blenders here, smooth, rich, expertly roasted here in Melbourne. Why wouldn't we have it any other way? Try it for yourself today. Australia, meet your new McCafe blend. Roasted and blended in Melbourne. Smoother, richer, and crafted for Aussies who love great coffee. The new McCafe blend. Now that's coffee fit for an Aussie. Mmm, yummy. Get your coffee into you. I need you to stay awake for a little bit longer for I'm me. I'm here. <laughs> Kaylee, obviously you are heading over to Perth to take on the Fever, which is your old team. We'll get to that in a minute. But how has the preparations been going this week for that game? I mean, we know Fever are in unbelievable form, sitting, well, not on top of the ladder, but, you know, without those 12 points, they'd be on top of the ladder. They're pretty hot right now, aren't they? Oh, definitely. And I think you've seen some really good form from individual players in that team and that's really helped their collective effort. Obviously, 
it's going to be um, a tough battle of when we played them in round one. Um, I guess they were a bit unknown off the back of the the points and um, the salary cap breaches and that kind of thing. And I think for us as well, with such a new attacking lineup, it was really uncertain as well. So I think we come into it with a lot more certainty and a lot more confidence as well. And I think our training week so far has really reflected that and we've really built from training to training. And I think you're going to see a really strong performance for us out there. I want to just ask you quickly about um, just after the Magpies game, we saw Simone come out and she was quite quite brutal in her uh, feedback about the game. That was just to the camera when she was talking about it. And, you know, you could see just the emotions. And you know, how has she been at training the last couple of weeks? Does she, did she do that after the game? And then when she gets back with the team, things are a little bit different? Yes and no, I think for us that game was unacceptable and that was the word that she used as well and I think it's really important to acknowledge when you're not having a good performance it's not all sunshine and rainbows and it's not always going to be you know taking the positives you need to understand what those I guess weaknesses are and, and working on them to create them into a strength and I think as a team we just weren't connecting the way that we know that we can and I think for us to be able to go back and change rooms behind closed doors and have those really hard discussions can be challenging at time and I think that's what Simone really allowed us to do is to challenge each other to have those honest and um, yeah real conversations and and then be able to deliver on court as well we we say we can talk about it but it's actually going out there and doing it and I think that's the key for us and, and what it has been since we had that conversation after the game and really delivering out on court. And what about uh, the goalers, uh, the shooters? Obviously, Sherelle McMahon has come home to Melbourne. Obviously, you'll be reunited with her in, in a matter of uh, weeks. But um, do you need to take now a bit more ownership of, of the situation? Yeah, unfortunately, Sherelle had to go back to um, Victoria, which obviously uh, we you know, knew the circumstances and, and we understand that as well. And for us, it doesn't really change what we do up here as a training um, group and as a unit for the shooters we have Simone and Di both helping us as well so uh, that's a real seamless transition but um, it is really nice we've had a couple of check-ins with her um, over the phone and just kind of made sure that she's on top of everything watching footage as well so it does mean we have to take a little bit more leadership in that space but I think that's also something that we should be doing anyway and being able to dominate in that circle. It's about having those conversations with each other and the communication out on court as well as off the court. She's a huge Vixens Live fan, Chaz Mack. Yeah, she watches every, every single, single week. second, every single yeah, week. So she will definitely not be missing this yeah. one. Now we know it's school holidays in Melbourne and it's time to find out what it takes to train just like a Melbourne Vixen. Register for our Train Like a Vixen clinics this school holidays. More information at melbournevixens.com.au. Did you do any netball clinics when you were a kid, Clint? Uh, not netball. Uh, I played a lot of mixed netball. Did you? Uh, things got a little rough on the court, actually. Really? Yeah. What position were you on the netball? Um, I was usually, <laughs> I was usually defender, generally speaking. Yeah, I mean but I, the tough I'm ones fairly, are. Fairly, no offence, Kay. <laughs> fairly zippy uh, around the midcourt as well. Um, yep. My sister sort of used to teach me a thing or two. Had a few tips for me, so she was a bit aggressive on the court. So. Mm -hmm. Have you still got that speed? Yeah. Yes, that's all right. <laughs> Have you still got that speed? I do, yeah. Yep. So anytime you need another assistant coach, I'm, I'm willing to, to come and sit courtside. Let's take a look, <laughs> yeah, Kalia. <laughs> let's just I am rubbish at netball. <laughs> rubbish. Oh gosh, I'm gonna save you, Clint. <laughs> it's let's, definitely not in the genes. Let's take a look at the last time you came up against the West Coast fever. Now this was round one at the start of this season. Kaylee, what was it like coming up against your old team? I mean, I, I can imagine it just would have been a whole range of emotions stepping out there. Yeah, it really was. And I think I didn't realise the the feeling that I would have until I actually got out there. And seeing the girls walk out onto court was quite uh, weird and a bit unusual for me. I think being at a club for so, so long and for seven years, um, you really develop a lot of friendships and a lot of close connections with the people. So... Coming over to Vixens, you know, it's felt like family for me and I think that's what I tried to take out on court and really, um, you know, put my best foot out there. So it was an unusual experience and, and something weird, but I think for me going into this game, I'm really prepared and I can't wait to get one over them. <laughs> I think I know the answer here, but I'm going to ask it anyway because netballers are very respectful athletes, but is there any shred of trash talking on the court when you come up against your old side? Please say yes. 
Um, I can I can say yes if you like, but no. To be really honest, <laughs> oh damn. To be really honest, there isn't. I I like um, you know I think a bit of white line fever, nothing yeah. untoward, but definitely a bit of white line fever when you get over the game, um, over the court onto the court and. Yeah, it's exciting to be able to play against people you've trained and played against for a number of years. And I think that makes it a lot more heated and a lot more hotly contested as well, particularly when you know them so well and and they know you so well as well. It makes it for a much better battle. You're good mates, though, with Courtney Bruce. And so you're probably going to be in the circle together at some stage. Surely you don't just give her a sneaky little elbow or just have a bit of a laugh or, I don't know, bag her out about something just to really stir her up. You know what you say? You say, I'm having a great dinner party and you're not coming. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, you don't. (laughs) No, you don't. (laughs) Um, Yeah, no, I think there's a lot of... Between her and I, there's a little bit of trash talking, um, a little bit of banter before the game. And I think on court, I think we know exactly how each other plays. And that's the beauty of it is that it's such a um, it's such a hotly contested battle. And I absolutely love playing against her. And it's such a competitive environment anyway. So um, both of us usually go pretty hard. And I know from previous trainings against each other, we kind of almost bicker like sisters. And, um, yeah, it's <laughs> definitely going to be like that on court, I'm sure. Good stuff. Hey, Kalia, we... Uh, we can't thank you enough for joining us on Vixens Live. I know all the Vixens fans here in Melbourne appreciate your input and we can't wait to see you back in Melbourne as yes. well. It's not long now. Hurry up, girls. Frequenting all those cafes. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be so good. And I think, you know, to thank everyone back in Victoria as well for the support that they've provided us over the last couple of weeks. It's not been easy, but at the same time, we really appreciate the support that you guys have been providing us. So, yeah, keep it going. And just quickly... Is the plan to fly back to Melbourne after the game in Perth? The plan is to fly back to Melbourne, yep. Ah, the girls are coming home. We can't wait. We might actually have them live at the desk next week. Absolutely, let's do it. (laughs) Thank you so much. Dinner party to celebrate. Absolutely. Bring us in some food (laughs) here next week. Yes, all right. Sure. Okay, so Kaylee is back. She brings us in some food. We'll be right. Thanks again for joining us, Kaylee, and to all of you Vixens fans for watching us tonight. We'll be back again next week.